for the conservative organizations. The, we're told initially Margaret started questioning their tax-exempt status, but it went well beyond that, right? What kind of stuff would they do? Well, initially, uh, groups were coming in seeking a tax-exempt status uh, in March, April 2010, as we now know, and uh, they were coming under horrific scrutiny. I'll give you some examples. They wanted to know if uh, individual board members had taken certain positions publicly, and if they took positions publicly, what were they? That's an outrageous violation of the First Amendment. Nobody ever asks Media Matters or, uh, or any of those left-wing groups these kinds of questions. Uh, they wanted to know their vendor list, how much money they pay their vendors, what they purchase from their vendors. They're, this has nothing to do with whether an organization gets a tax-exempt status. They wanted to know about their associations. Uh, if anybody was thinking of running for public office, if board members had run for public office, it was a clear effort to intimidate and to prevent these organizations from getting the tax-exempt status they have a right to under the Internal Revenue Code. And we should keep in mind that any time any individual gets an envelope from the Internal Revenue Service or, you know, God forbid, a phone call, um, it is intimidating. It, it, it has the desired effect in and of itself, right? Well, and the thing is, yes, and the thing is people were speaking out, groups were speaking out, uh, the President of the United States, doesn't he read a newspaper? Doesn't he hear reports? Congress, uh, did they hold a hearing on this? No, a question came up at a hearing, and they questioned the right. Internal Revenue Commissioner. So, uh, you know, for, for all that's being said today, how outrageous this is, it was outrageous a year ago, too. Yeah. You know, Mark, though, um, it would almost seem too blatant, if not too stupid, uh, to, to, to have it inside the administration actually barking orders to higher ups at the IRS, do this, follow this group, look into the legality, uh, tax wise or otherwise, about this group and its 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 status and filing status. Um, but dumber things have happened in the past. I mean, do you suspect, as, as just as a, as a as a lawyer and a pretty damn good one, that this this went beyond just some rogue IRS agents? Do I think it went beyond a couple of, of uh, revenue agents in Cincinnati? You bet I do. Uh, how high it goes, I have no idea. Whether Congress is capable of getting to the bottom of it, I have no idea. Uh, but, I mean, that, that, to, to react to that pressure, if someone is telling a higher-up, why don't you look into these groups? I don't know how the IRS works, but uh, that alone would, 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 would raise flags among anyone working at the IRS. We, we are targeting, apparently, a political group and or groups right now and that doesn't fly. That, that doesn't seem to make sense to me. Um, I'm, I'm talking about from the perspective of an IRS agent or, or a district head, you know, looking into something, that the order itself, if there are, are following orders, it, it doesn't sound right. Are you saying there aren't stupid people in government? There's stupid people all over the place. I forgot that. Things. That was a very stupid point I made there. No, it wasn't. But, but, the, but the point is, we... It, it, I don't think we should make a decision and say, you know, I can't believe people are capable of this, or I can't believe that this would be. They need to investigate this. And the way you investigate this is use the full powers that Congress has to, uh, in its oversight powers to issue subpoenas, to get documents, to uh, interview people, to pose them, uh, to bring people in and, uh, and make them testify under oath and to do it publicly because the government belongs to us, and that includes the Internal Revenue Service. I'll tell you something else. The president should have apologized to these Tea Party and conservative groups. Members of Congress who have been thumbing their nose at them should do the same. And again, I know this is unpopular. The Republican Party that has nothing but contempt for the conservative movement and these Tea Party organizations now coming to their rescue, they owe us an apology too. Because in the House of Representatives, I want to say it for a third time, what they did was impotent. What they did is not print. They're going to hold a hearing on Friday, I understand. Okay, we'll take it a year late, but we'll still take it. But again, I want to tell you, there are a couple of, uh, of law enforcement folks at the Treasury Department and the Inspector General's office who did their job. When we wrote them and we laid the matter out, they came and they interviewed me, and we gave them everything we had, and they interviewed a number of other people. And there are other legal groups like Jay Sekulow's group who deserve credit, too, for representing a number of these groups. But... The fact of the matter is there's a reason why people are so negative on the federal government. They should be. Yeah. Mark Levin, it would have been a very different story had he's been some left-wing groups maybe targeted, but uh, neither here nor there. The controversy is now, and the uproar is now as well. Uh, Mark Levin, thank you very, very much.